All right, so here we have the function f, and we want to find an instantaneous rate of change at f when x is 3. So basically, we just have to find the derivative of f and evaluate it for x equals 3. So then we just basically plug 3 in for x into the derivative equation. So then f prime of x would simply be, using the power rule, 3x squared minus 12x plus 8. So f prime of 3 would be 3 times 9 minus 12 times 3 plus 8. 27 minus 36 to negative 9 plus 8 to negative 1. So answer will be C. Problem 8. OK, here we have a particle that moves along a straight line. The graph of the particle's velocity, v of t, is shown here. And at, at the beginning, it's at 0, at k, and over here at m, the velocity is 0. And then at t equals m and t equals j, and so not t equal, at t equals j and l, whoops. At just t equals j and l, we have horizontal tangents. So we have horizontal tangents, meaning that the derivative of the velocity is zero. So v prime is equal to zero at both of those. So here's the key. So we want to find where the speed of the particle is decreasing. So let's think about this. When the velocity is positive, that just tells you the direction it's moving. Um, when the velocity is positive, that tells you that it's moving in the positive direction. Um, it doesn't tell you necessarily that it's increasing or decreasing. Um, it just tells you, remember, the magnitude and the direction. So, you know, so here, all along here, it's moving, we could say, the positive direction. Now, from here to here, the velocity is negative. That just means it's in a negative direction. Remember, velocity is essentially the, um, the change in position, and, it's, and the sign of velocity tells you direction. So let's say if you're going 100 miles per hour, um, you know, we all know what that means. You're going 100 miles per hour. You're changing 100 miles per hour in terms of your position. But if you say negative 100 miles per hour, like we don't really talk like that in real life. We basically just say 100 miles per hour, no matter what direction you're going. But in physics, that just means that you're going in the opposite direction that, that you were going when you said you were going 100 miles per hour. So when we're talking about real life, in real life when we talk about velocity, we're talking about speed. So speed is just the absolute value of velocity. Speed is always positive. So if we want to look at the speed, just treat velocity as always positive. So this, can, you can think of it as a reflection like that. This is one way to, to, to go about this problem. This, so the, the speed of the graph are, would be this. That will be like, think of that as the speed. Now, if you're looking at when the speed is decreasing or increasing, it's increasing essentially you know, from here to here. It's increasing here. It's decreasing here and it's increasing here, and it's decreasing here. So it's decreasing from here to here, it's decreasing from j to k, and it's decreasing from here to here, which is from l to n. So from j to k, and l to m, and that'll be your answer. And step number nine. So we have the function f shown here. So what values of x for f is it not going to be continuous. So um, it's not continuous, you know, when the denominator is zero. So it's not continuous x minus two equals zero or when x plus one equals zero. Now you get then x equals two and then x equals negative one. So it's not continuous at these two values. So, um, you know, here, this, the answer will technically right away be d. Now, the, the common question is, well, can't you factor out these x minus twos? And then you'll just get x minus two times x plus three all over just an x plus one. 
So then you're now maybe you're thinking like, well, why why couldn't the answer just be then C? You're like probably going back, probably going back and forth between C and D. Like what's going on there? Well, what what's going on here is that mathematically, yeah, you can um you know cancel these out, but there's still going to be a point of this continuity on the graph of F because technically this is a different graph. The only difference between this graph and this graph is that it's going to have a hole at, this is going to have a hole at this point here at x equals 2, at hole at x equals 2. That's the only difference. You call it a removable discontinuity because you remove it from the graph you think of. So if I, again, I'll just draw part of the graph because I don't know what the graph looks like, but I know that at 2, if I want to find where this hole is at, when x is 2, I just figure it out, and I'll get 0. I'll get 2, 0. So there's a hole at 2, 0. That's essentially what's going on. At negative 1, you're like, well, what's going on between at negative 1? At negative 1, there's an asymptote. So it's discontinuous at these points. But there's, there are different types of discon discontinuity. There's a hole here, or a removable discontinuity, and it's just a, a vertical asymptote. So the answer is still D. Right, 10, a particle moves along the x-axis with velocity given here for positive t more than or equal to zero. The velocity, the particle, no, if the particle is at position x equals negative two at t equals zero, what's the position of the particle at times equals three? Okay, so to find the position at t equals three, we'll commonly use s of t to represent position. So we want to find s of three. S of three will be where the particle started. So it was going to be its initial position, S of zero, plus how it changed over those three seconds. So it's going to be the integral of velocity from zero to three. Or this, this part tells you the, if you, how much it changed its position from zero to three. So here we're just going to then evaluate this. S of zero, we're given that it starts at negative two. And we integrate V of t, we're given that V of t is three t squared minus four. So integrating that using the power rule essentially, we'll get on t cubed minus four t. And we're going to integrate that from zero to three. And then so we'll get negative two plus three, 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 so 27 minus 12. The zero doesn't not gonna do anything. And so you get negative two plus 15 until so you get 13. So your answer will be A. All right, number 11, we have this integral here. And we want to find where the graph is concave down. So for that, we want to study the second derivative. You want to study the second derivative because the second derivative will tell you um, the concavity of it. So when it's concave up, concave down. So for here, when you're basically integrating the integral, so when you want to find f prime of x, because you're going to integrate, or sorry, you're going to differentiate integral. So you're differentiating f of x, which means you're going to differentiate this side. When you differentiate this side, you know, if you want to find f, that'll be f prime of x, you're basically just undoing the integration. So you, this is basically going to the second fundamental theorem of calculus. So you're just left with the expression on the inside in terms of x. You just replace the, um, t with an x. We get 2x cubed minus 15x squared plus 36. The, using the x and t, is, we just use the t as a technicality, kind of like a dummy variable to just make sure you know it's different. It could be a different x value than the one here. Now, we, need to find, we want to find a second derivative. So we just integrate then this, which will just be 6x squared minus 30x plus 36. Then we want to find the possible inflection points. Let's find possible inflection points, find where the second derivative is zero. So 
So find the zeros of this equation. So we can factor out a six, six times x squared minus five x plus six. We get six times x minus three times x minus two. So we have possible inflection points. So we want to check when x is three, when x is two. So we want to basically look break up our interval at two and at three. So you want to see what, what's the sign of the second derivative? Like what's f prime of x, what's, or what's f double prime here? What's f double prime here? And what's f double prime here? Um, so we just pick a value in here. I mean, I'm just going to pick f double prime of zero. Here I'll pick f double prime of two and a half. And here I'll pick f double prime of 10. Um, just because it's easy to work with. So we take the second derivative equation, evaluate f double prime of zero, plug zero into here, we're going to get just a positive 36. So we get a positive number. So we, have, so we get a positive number, that means the graph is concave up. It's doing this thing. We find f double prime of two and a half. We put that in here. We're gonna get slightly uh, small, like almost, almost, almost a, um, a positive number, but it's gonna be a very small negative. That'll be like negative 0.25. So we get a negative number here. It's concave down here. Plug 10 into here. Get like 600 minus 300 plus 36. So you'll still give you another positive number here. The graph is concave up here. So it's going to be concave down from two to three. So the answer is going to be D.